Western medicine is chemistry-based medicine. No matter pills, supplements, herbs, or medications. Eastern medicine, however, is flavor-based medicine, since it's philosophy-based, which is the five elements in the nature. A good example to explain the East-West difference is the artificial sweetener, which is supposed to be the sugar substitute. This product was created perfectly for the market. Since many people are afraid of sugar, and meanwhile they crave for sugar, people are worried that sugar in the coffee will make them gain weight. As a matter of fact, even though more than moderate amount of sugar is unhealthy, the majority of the sugar is not from the coffee, unless you drink a lot of it and put a lot of sugar in there. Therefore, from my practice, I haven't seen anybody lost weight successfully with sugar substitute. On another hand, many of them have gained weight. It makes more sense these people have gained weight since the sweet flavor didn't change. They have the same function on the Chinese spleen, gastric, and digestion. They are still satisfactory to the brain. And increase the appetite through the Chinese digestion system. Since the sweet flavor haven't changed, the addiction doesn't change. So it's a perfect product to keep the same customer in the market with the same craving. In Chinese medicine, the five flavors have very strong therapeutic effects. They are salty, sweet, bitter, sour, and spicy. From a scientific perspective. Our tongue can only taste four flavors: salty, sweet, bitter, and sour. For tongue, spicy is not a taste; it's more of a feeling of temperature and pain, or hot and pain. Even in Chinese medicine, there is still argument regarding whether or not spicy is the fifth taste. Some people consider that the fifth taste should be something like delicious. So that in both science and Chinese medicine, there are basically four tastes in the tongue. What we perceive in the meal every day are actually mostly from the smell. Our nose is able to smell minimum thousands of different odors, and smell is also part of therapeutics in Chinese medicine. For example, in all the cultures, we have something like stinky food. Such as some kind of cheese, canned fish, or fermented tofu. These stinky foods are always in people's diet, since they are beneficial for the health. The Chinese medicine believes that this smell strengthens the kidney, which is a congenital energy. Since our tongue could taste only four different flavors, from another perspective, it means that these four flavors are very important. Salty and sweet are the flavors we taste every day, and have a tremendous impact on our health. Western medicine always explain these two in the chemical perspective. For example, too low or too high levels of sodium chloride is lethal, and hypertension is attributed to the over intake of salt. However, in practice, it's very difficult to decrease blood pressure from limiting the salt intake. Many patients sacrifice the salty flavor that they love for a long time, but without result. Even though the sodium osmosis contributes to the blood pressure, but in idiopathic hypertension, that's not the cause. It is to decrease the blood pressure number without knowing its cause, and with sacrificing the salty flavor. The salty flavor is beneficial for the Chinese kidney. That provide energy to make us warmer and also happier with more vitality. And in the summer, the salt secretes along with the sweats, which is part of the natural regulation. Without enough salty flavor to nourish the kidney energy, people feel less vitality, less happier, lower spirit, lower mood, and less motivated. They may also feel colder in the cold weather. The body need to compensate. Inevitably, they will take more food and calories by all means. Hypertension is part of the metabolic syndrome. Focusing only on the numbers is not enough for treating the number. Similar is the sweet flavor. 
which is necessary to nourish the spleen, gastric, and digestion system, especially for those who live in a humid and moisture environment. Moderate intake of sweet is beneficial for clearing up the digestion system dampness, but since sugar itself is inflammatory and dampness, over intake will aggravate the dampness in the digestion system and the whole body. There are some diets that completely eliminate the sugar and carbohydrates. This debilitates the Chinese digestion system. For people with digestive issues, this will aggravate the situation, and sweet flavor is absolutely necessary in these cases. The next one is bitter, which is coldness in Chinese medicine. In many tropical areas, people drink bitter tea. Coffee is also bitter, and many people put sugar, cream, or cinnamon to make it warmer. For people who don't have strong energy in their heart, bitter can be harmful and cause palpitation. Bitter flavor isn't for those who have a cold abdomen with diarrhea. The last one for today is the sour flavor. Again, moderate intake of the sour flavor is beneficial for the liver, especially to nourish the liver in negative energy, which is good for people who live in the dry area. But over intake, one has to be careful with the liver and digestion functions. Today is just a short introduction to this very deep topic. We introduce the philosophy and what flavor is for which internal organ. There will be more interesting discussion on this topic in the future. Thanks for listening and watching. See you next time.